everyone welcome to this post result review session for exam sitting september 23 attempt this is rizwan mania once again with this extraordinary post result review session that we always conduct for our students because it is very important to ensure that you people are given proper guidance before your next upcoming attempt I want to congratulate all the students globally who managed to pass in September 23 attempt. So overall, 89,719 uh, exams were conducted and a total of 3,763 students became affiliates. So once again, Heartest congratulations to all the affiliates and the other students who managed to pass uh, in the upcoming, uh, in the in, in September 23 attempt. Those who could not manage to pass, obviously, they might be a bit disappointed. They might be uh, demotivated. So this session will definitely help you to boost your confidence. And yes, it's sometimes so devastating that students are very much confused and very demotivated. So my friends, remember, it's a professional exam. And in these examinations, things like these do happen. It's not do or die situation. What you have to ensure that, yes, if there are any problems, if you any mistakes you have done in the past, you have to learn from those mistakes. If you learn from those mistakes, there is never a failure. So you have to make sure that you learn from your mistakes. And once you learn and you come back hard, that is where you succeed. So I hope you all will take maximum advantage from this session that we are conducting right now. I want to introduce now my co-host here for today. Uh, and uh, he is Ahmed Mumtaz, one of the most prominent faces of WIF and recently have been promoted as Senior Strategic Planner at WIFI as well. Sir Ahmed, uh, kindly confirm if you can hear my voice. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much, Sir Rizwan. Uh, well, I hope all of you are doing great, those who are listening. And yes, I'm here uh, with all the energy I have. Okay. Thank you very much today. Uh, unfortunately, Sir Hassan Dosani is not available due to uh, traveling. He is traveling somewhere. That's why uh, he is not available today. Uh, as always, he was part of these very important sessions. Anyways, we'll try uh, to... Um, give you maximum guidance in his absence as well. So I think it's now time to start with this post-result review session. Uh, and let's start first of all with the faculty introduction. Now, I want to uh, first of all introduce the entire faculty at WIFI. Okay, so first of all, to start with, uh, we have Hassan Dosani as our SBL specialist as always and uh, last time uh, the new method of SBL testing was also introduced uh, where a lot of students took help from Sir Hassan and he really really did a lot of hard work. Then we have Ahmed Mumtaz uh, as our AA and AAA uh, tutor at WIFI for both English and Urdu language. Taha Popatia is our AFM specialist, as always, a very hardworking tutor who really works really hard for the students. And he also teaches in both English and Urdu language at Wifi. Then we have Khamis Bilal uh, as our TX specialist for Urdu. Ali Amanullah as FR Urdu specialist. Sania Asif has been a new introduction to our team this time. Uh, she is dealing with TX and ATX in English language at WIFI. Tashweta Gupta, uh, dealing with FR and SBR in English at WIFI. Abil Ahmed is the ATX specialist 
uh, in Urdu. Uh, then we have another new person being added into our team. It's Jerry, uh, who is dealing with FR English uh, at WIFI with Prabha as well uh, for SBR English. So these two also have been the new introduction here. Uh, after that, Amjad Hussain has been added to our team as SBR Urdu specialist. And then myself, I deal with uh, <clears throat> PM, FM and APM. So that's the introduction of our faculty. Uh, I hope uh, <clears throat> this is clear to all of you. I would request the entire faculty of WIFI to kindly open their webcams as well. All the faculty members, you uh, have been upgraded to co-host position. So uh, you can now open your webcams as well. Okay. Uh, everyone else, keep yourself muted. Uh, I'm talking about the students uh, because once we will start our uh, high achiever session, then definitely we'll uh, invite those students to give their input. So that's the introduction about our faculty at WIFI. Uh, moving towards the very important segment of passing ratios. Uh, yes, passing ratios uh, do play a very important role uh, in students' ACCA examination uh, journey. But yeah, uh, these are all average passing ratios. Uh, I would want Sir Ahmed to now uh, give a brief idea about the overall importance of the passing ratio and also uh, to briefly ask the tutors in relation to different passing ratios. Yes, Sir Ahmed. Okay, so the overall passing ratios are in front of us and uh, ACC has always been very consistent. There, There is never a very drastic or dramatic change when it comes to passing ratios. So, uh, but I think uh, from the student's point of view, it's important to realize what, what is the passing ratio globally uh, in order to understand what kind of effort is expected from the student. So comparative figure is really, really important. So I think it's time to start having a discussion regarding the passing ratios. And let's start with the AFM. So, Sir Taha Popatia, over to you. What do you say about AFM? You were very happy last time, I remember, with the 47%. And you were hoping that it will cross 50%. So, yeah. Uh, hello, sir. Is my voice audible? Yes, and sir. Absolutely. Okay. So, yes. Uh, once again... AFM passing ratio has been very, very high. And uh, like always, it is one of the optional exam papers which has a significantly high passing ratio. This time again, it is uh, 45%. Until uh, morning, I compiled the passing ratios for WIFI and uh, it was around 56%. So I was very, very happy once again. And again, thanks to Sir Rizwan as well because his... Uh, Financial management output, the output that I get at WIFI for AFM from financial management exams paper is absolutely polished. So once your base is good in financial management, you do well in AFM. So 45%, last time 47%, very, very, very high passing ratio in one of the optional exam papers. Very happy. That's great. Okay, uh, let's roll back and... Uh, let's discuss the passing ratio of ATX. So, Ma'am Sanya, can you hear me, please? Yes. Uh, this time round, the result related to advanced taxation and taxation has been uh, like really very really nice, and it had been um, amongst the same. Uh, it has followed the same standard it used to uh, like uh, happening before. I mean, in in fifties percentage. But uh, all those students who had not been able to make up uh, for this time are those uh, who, are, who were not well prepared, especially in terms of revision kit, because it is like reiterated many times, it is like focused uh, many times that the practice has to be done very well before uh, uh, you entering your examination hall. So, um, as far as generally the examination score is concerned, uh, it is like good. And uh, I just hope that all the students who are going to strive for the next attempt will be able to do much better next time. Thank you very much. 
So ATX with a heavy 48%, AFM with a heavy 45%. So over to Rizwan, sir. Sir Rizwan, APM. Okay. For advanced performance management, uh, it always remains a challenge. Uh, I, I cannot say anything at same 34% every time. <laughs> Uh, but the best thing is that I'm getting good results from the morning. So that is something that is very really satisfactory for me. Overall passing ratio, it's the same thing. But uh, what we can do as tutors at WIFI is that we ensure how much improvement we are doing. So I think uh, for us, it's good. But yeah, it's remained same at 34%. Okay, so the last optional paper, AAA stands at 34% and last time around it was 34%. So it's a milestone in itself. So yeah, consistency is the key, as they say. So for AAA, I believe the passing rate will shoot up in the near future with the incorporation of all those 20 professional marks. Things will gear up towards the betterment, just like in AFM and ATX. Okay, now let's have a discussion on SBR and for SBR, uh, over to Ma'am Tashvita. Uh, am I audible to you? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so SBR recently, there was a change in question number one, uh, where pre-populated spreadsheet was introduced. And uh, there was a very uh, huge fear that the past percentage would decline or people won't be able to adapt to the new question. But as can be seen, the pass percentage is nearly same, 51 and 50%. That is not something which is a huge change. So that's a positive no, no, thing. No, no. And uh, apart from that, I would also emphasize on the fact that uh, SPR is easily passable, just like SBL. We range always between 50%, 51%. Uh, sometimes it might go down to 49 That has been a trend, but not below than that. Uh, also, I would say that at WIFI, our results since morning has been really, really good for SBR. So I would say that that's an achievement because people were afraid about the changes in SBR, but still ACCA uh, and, you know, our students at WIFI has really performed well. Okay, thank you very much. Now, moving forward towards SBL, SBL obviously we are going to miss uh, Sir Hassan, who's traveling somewhere in the United States. Anyways, SBL stands at 50%. And I I think as Ma'am Tashita just mentioned, SBL and SBR both are consistently, you know, somewhere at 50 or even sometimes more than 50. So SBL stands at 50%, pretty consistent. So let's move towards the next paper, FM, financial management, the nursery of AFM. Sir Rizwan, FM. Okay. For financial management, uh, the passing ratio uh, is 49 this time. I think uh, that's not a good sign uh, because FM always remains at 50 or above 50. Uh, so I think uh, not a very massive decline, but yeah, 3% decline from last uh, uh, last attempt. Uh, but still, overall, it's, it's a good passing ratio. But considering the standards of FM, I think slide down, uh, maybe next time we expect it to go up. Okay, so the next paper is double A. Double A was, last time it was 45. And before that it was 44. So it, it, there was a consistent and a slow improvement in double A. But this time it's unfortunately 42%. Uh, there is a decline in double A for a huge 3%. It used to be 40% as well. Overall, the results of AA are pretty good because for a theoretical paper such as AA, we cannot compare it with FR or TAC or even with PM or FM, especially FM, which is up high at 50%. Still, 42% is a decent score for a challenging paper such as AA. Okay, now let's have a discussion on FR. And for FR, we've got multiple tutors. So... Uh, Sir, Sir Jerry, can you hear me? Okay, so uh, so for FR, I think the result was pretty good this time. Uh, this I have not gone through the actual past percentage, but again, FR is again to be uh, when you are looking into the long in a broader picture, it's one of the easiest papers in the F level, which uh, students find it easier to pass, and I feel that it is uh, one of the papers which the students have to start. Art, so that it's like a 
uh, what the basic paper. It is not a very uh, difficult paper compared to the other papers which we have a AA and FM. And again, if you go on to the right track, you could always pass uh, FR, I feel. Okay, that's great. Okay, so... Yeah. Okay. Uh, moving forward towards the tax paper. Uh, so, Ma'am Sanya, can you please have a few words on the tax percentage, which is huge this time around? It is almost in the same line. What we believe that uh, students usually get good grades when it comes to taxation paper, especially when they have to appear for taxation UK stream. So uh, for me, it is a little bit increase in the percentage, but still I would say that the standard has been maintained by the students. So it's uh, it's like a good thing. It's, uh, it's like putting uh, uh, the new students at ease that they can score better than what has been done before. Uh, but uh, when it comes to like uh, the point that it is a huge score, it is something to be considered as a normal for taxation because yeah, it's like 54%. easy to, yeah. Uh, last time it was like around, I guess, 56. So you can say there's a decline of 2%, but it's like uh, it could be considered as something normal as what done before. Uh, but uh, like okay. papers like TX and AA cannot be compared. So when it comes to TX, I would uh, okay. consider uh, something in the line of 50s to be something could be considered as consistent, uh, consistent performance by the students. So that's all I can say. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. So last but surely not the least, PM, over to you, Sir Rizwan. Okay. So performance management, uh, again, uh, it's it's same 40 40 percent but this time comparatively what we just saw that paper was a bit difficult because of one of the most uh for students it's it's uh unexpected topic uh Ahmed knows that topic as well and that's time series that was tested i don't know uh what what these f2 tutors are doing anyways uh <laughs> Yeah, this this became the major reason. I think students were really upset. Uh, I, I need to ask the same thing of Taha as well. Uh, so people were like time series came in the examination and they were they were not at all prepared for that. Uh, other than that, overall, I think uh, perform, performance management always remains a tricky paper. Uh, and uh, passing ratio, surprisingly, it's the same for me uh, here. But I think uh, overall, the feedback of the student was not very positive for PM this time. Uh, and this clearly shows that all the uh, topics, mainly that are from the F2 area, they need to prepare or revise those topics as well for the examination. So here we are done with the passing ratios. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Sir Ahmed. Uh, now it's time to move towards the next segment uh, uh, for today's session. And that segment is a very popular segment as always. And that is the high achievers of uh students uh wifi students for uh september 23 attempt so uh, now i'm presenting the names in front of you uh these are the students who managed to secure above 70 uh this time in in september 23 uh so we have invited these students because the purpose of that is to give you the idea that these students, if they can do, why you cannot do? Normally, as I always say this, that tutors do explain a lot of things. They do motivate. They do come up with good plans for you people. But at the end of the day, students sometimes might think that, uh, okay, these are tutors and they always come up with something uh, out of the box or something very of high standards. So uh, we just want to give you the realization that it's not that. Your friends, your colleagues who appeared in September 23 did perform well. So those are not AIs, I would say, not machines. They are human beings like you. So if they can do it, why you cannot do it? So my friends, we have invited few students today. Uh, yeah, it was a long list of students, but we had to prioritize and select few. So 
it's now time to uh, ask uh, the respective faculties uh, and the respective tu uh, the students uh, to have a small conversation and take feedbacks from these uh, high achievers of WIFI to share their feedback and how they manage to score such good marks. So I would want my admin to just make these students the co-hosts so that they can open their uh, webcams. The first student that I want to invite is Mohammed Kumail. Uh, Mohammed Kumail, if you are here, please kindly confirm. Assalamualaikum, sir. Waalaikum Mohammed Kumail, how are you? APM 71 marks uh, in Pakistan. He's from Pakistan. So uh, once again, advanced performance management. Uh, overall, if you look at the high marks ratios in APM, it's not that very high every time. Uh, so I think it's a big achievement. Mohammed Kumail, uh, first of all, just tell me, do you work or you just study? I also do work, but it is not full time. It's not uh, part time. Can you be a bit loud, Kumail, please? For a bit loud, please. I do please. work, but it's not full time. It's okay. I do work, but it's not full time. It's part time, and it's a bit flexible because I work for my own father. Okay. Okay. So how you uh, were able to manage advanced it's performance management? Uh, so not for APM only for all subjects. I think consistency is the key. You have to allot at least a minimum time of three hours. If you go for two papers, I think every day so that you find yourself in a comfortable position at the end of three months and appear in a comfortable manner without any anxiety or anything. Okay. What about uh, the coverage from the portal uh, and the past papers? So you, you used to write the answers uh, or you just uh, used to watch the video lectures uh, and what about the mocks? How important mocks were? Uh, so first of all, I had a certain difficulty during those three months. I was appearing for AFM and APM both. So, and I had That's certain great. personal events that I had to go through. So, I was lacking a bit of time. So, I was having difficulty. So, I did not go through all of the past papers through writing. I mo watched most of them and wrote like about 5 to 10 only. There were about above 50 past papers on the portal. I could not write all of them, but I managed to watch all of them so that I could gain all the knowledge and make sure that I had all the knowledge when I was appearing the, in the paper. As for the assignments and the mock papers, they were extremely important. I managed to I managed to go through all of them and attempted all of them so that I could get marked professionally and know where I was standing. It helped a lot because as so, the first assignment I did not I did not score well. The second I failed in fact. But from the third assignment, I saw my scores rising as I saw. And then got to know how to attempt my questions and gain better knowledge. So that's a very interesting feedback. I would say uh, it clearly shows the assignment help you to improve your performance, right? Because there are there are yes, uh, yes, a absolutely. few students who feel like that assignments are not very important or we don't do these things. But this means, as you just mentioned here, it it did help you to improve your performance, right? Yes, it was extremely important in gaining confidence throughout the uh, three-month period okay. and getting to know what where I was making the mistake. Great. Great. Thank you very much for your feedback, uh, Kumail. I hope you uh, secure a nationwide position. Uh, I think you also uh, achieved high marks in performance management as well. So I, I wish you best of luck for that as well, that you do secure a nationwide position for paper advanced performance management. Thank you. Okay, now let's move towards the uh, two students uh, that Tashwita uh, will take up uh, for FR and SBR. Uh, so, Shahid Vora and uh, Akriti Gupta, both I'm sure are part of the session. So, over to you, Tashwita. Uh, yeah, thank you, sir. Uh, Shahid, am I audible to you? I think he was traveling. Shahid, are you there? Yeah, he is here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah Shahid, can you... 
Okay. So first of all, congratulations on getting such a huge score of 80 marks in FR. And yes, uh, I would like to know that what was the strategy that you adopted uh, for your preparation phase of FR? Ma'am, actually, I did nothing new. I just followed the, your planner and I was consistent on following it. That's great. So basically, you followed the lectures, uh, the text, or what? Uh, like, with what combination was there? Man, first, like before the live class, before the weekly live class, I used to uh, go through uh, go through the lectures, and then can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Yes, I can hear you. I think there's an issue with this connection. Okay. I think we shall move forward towards Akriti. Sorry, ma'am. Am I audible? Yeah, you're audible now. Hello. Yeah, Shahid, you're audible. Please go ahead. I think, Dashwita, we need to move towards the next student. Yeah, he's actually outside. Uh, Akriti, are you there? Yes, miss. Yeah. Uh, okay, great. So great to see you, Akriti, face to face. So first of all, again, yeah. congratulations, SBR, FR, both this time 80 marks coincidentally. So Akriti, what was your strategy of preparation for SBR, especially for the pre-populated spreadsheet? Um, for pre-populated spreadsheet, the thing that helped me the most uh, starting off with um, your Super 20, uh, we started off sol solving a pre-populated spreadsheet. I think we did about three or four questions. Uh, that really helped. Uh, what solidified my knowledge uh, on pre-populated spreadsheet was watching the ACCA tutor uh, video uh, solution on the pre-mock question. So those two things really helped me. And what was your strategy for the preparation phase, actually? Like, how did you prepare? Lectures, uh, Kaplan text, or notes? What was it? Um, the Kaplan text was um, a complete, like, it flipped everything around for me. I remember, um, I didn't, I forgot at the time when I was studying, but I remembered later that you said um, to focus on TYUs. And I wish I had done that sooner, but thankfully I did and I'm doing it on time. So uh, Kaplan text and the, the TYUs, they, they help bridge any gap, any and all gaps in your knowledge. Yeah. That's very So I remember, Akriti, that while you were preparing, you were very underconfident uh, and you actually had long discussions uh, with me on call that you're not able to cope up or you were managing SBL. And I would like to <clears throat> mention that she also scored 73 in SBL together with 80 in SBR. So how did you manage that phase, like that underconfidence in your preparation, feeling like you're not on the right track and then scoring an 80? What was that journey? Uh, first of all, uh, you made it easier because every single time I felt like this is it's done. I can't do anymore. There's nothing left for me to do. I shouldn't even give the exam. Every single time you told me it's not too late, you can still get with it. So that's number one, speaking to you. Uh, number two, I um I even though I took I took on the content two weeks before, again, I revised it properly again, all of the topics. Uh, that really helped. And um, uh, your super 20, they were really helpful, really helpful because that just helped me dive into questions that I didn't even know where to begin. So that being in that mindset, being in your mindset while solving the questions was really helpful. Yeah. That's great. So uh, would you like to advise anything uh, to the upcoming SPR students, like anything that you feel is the most important thing in your preparation mock or anything that you want to emphasize? Uh, the most important thing, uh, the I. Kaplan, the, the Kaplan text really turned things around for me. 
uh, the TYUs and um, reading from the TYUs, understanding where you lack in your any gaps in your knowledge. Uh, second thing is uh, your Super 20. They were incredibly, yeah, game changing. And uh, third, I think would be your videos on current issues and technical articles, because these are very, um, they're not really easy or really interesting to even read or understand, but those videos really boosted, you know, really solidified the confidence in those uh, in question four of the paper. Yeah. That's great. That, that's great. So TYU, someone is asking is test yourself questions in Kaplan, which are really important in addition to the illustrations. So thank you, Akriti, for your valuable time. And once again, congratulations. And I want you to know that I'm super proud of you. Thank you so much, Miss. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, now moving towards uh, the F A F M student, Rhea. Uh, and over to you, Taha Bhopadia. Thank you so much, sir. I hope my voice is audible. Yes, it uh, is. Okay. Uh, Admin, can you make Ria Agarwal? Just... Okay. <laughs> Ria, I hope you are doing well. Yeah. All right. So, okay. first, first of all, congratulations for <laughs> uh, scoring amazing 71 marks. This is absolutely amazing. You did such a wonderful job and you secured 71 marks. So, uh, I want you to speak to the students and tell them like how many hours you studied, what was your study plan? Let's first discuss the study plan that you opted and when you actually started studying. Okay, is my voice audible? Yes, yes, Ria, it is yeah. audible. Okay, uh, so basically, uh, first of all, I was working throughout. So I was studying and working, so which obviously impacted the amount of uh, time I could give to study AFM. Uh, but I had made it very clear, like since the since mid May, that I will give AFM. So I was very clear with the paper I'm supposed to do, and I started my preparations pretty early because I thought that the working would obviously consume most of my time, so I would not get time later on. Uh, so that was one thing that worked in my favor because obviously I was up and ahead with the portions. As for your planner, I consistently like followed all of it. Uh, about the amount of time, well, it was differing because uh, uh, we had like uh, July, August, it's supposed to be a vacation time as well. So all the families go on vacation. Uh, mm -hmm. So I had some disruptions here and there. So I did not dedicate like a fixed amount of time every day, but I made sure that there was like half one hour or at least two hours every day I allocate towards this. And if I'm lacking, then I would give more time during the weekends to cover up any portions that I've left behind. So that was one thing uh, that I did. Okay, that's good. So now the second question is, uh, did you follow the planner or did you follow something else apart from the content on the portal? And what was the main thing that you focused, the most important thing you, you think that uh, one must focus to get 70 plus marks? Well, I think this couldn't be emphasized more, but every day through your voice note, it's so pretty loud and clear that past papers are the key to success. You have to do one paper, not just once, twice, probably thrice to excel it, to understand it. So every time I used to watch the lecture videos, I used to do one attempt at that time on the Excel, then do another attempt during uh, one of the weekends or near, near the life classes where you used to give homework mostly. So that was my second revision. And then I did the third revision quite later on when actually I revised those questions. So it was mostly like doing most of the questions three to four times. So it was pretty solid in my brain that I knew the concepts really well by then. 
because just doing it once, I feel you can't really gather everything from that question. You might understand it then, but you will forget it later on. So I think that really helped me. Uh, with terms of the planner, I actually followed the planner like completely. Yes, I did go up for a vacation uh, for a week or two in July. So I was behind, but I came back and I covered up everything and uh, apart from the planner, I also watched a lot of YouTube videos, uh, not just uh, like uh, just motivation videos because I used to feel very low and then suddenly I'd feel like, no, this is not working for me. I can't do it. So sometimes those kind of videos, which just people coming and talking about their experience really helps just how we are doing it right now. I think I, I used to watch those videos and it really used to help me. All right. And the last thing, uh, any important suggestion, advice to any student, number one, who is appearing first time in December, number two, to those students who are going to have a reset for AFM in December. So keep your advices separate, number one, for those who are going to attempt it for the first time, and then some suggestion or advice for those who are going to give it for the second time. Uh, well, for the first time, because you're going to establish your base and you're going to establish your concepts and it is a completely different uh, story altogether. It's not, it picks ideas from FR, FM, all those foundation papers, but it's obviously very different and it's too much into the finance side. And if you do not understand those terminologies, you don't understand those concepts, then it's pretty hard to equip yourself with it. Uh, especially, I remember this one concept I struggled the most with was hedging. Understanding the difference between currency hedging and interest rate hedging, that interest itself, rate. it took me a long time. I used to even message sir and ask him doubts as to what's the clear difference. Because even one month into studies, I did not realize where exactly, uh, you know, the difference comes and how do I recognize it. So, oh. you know, understanding those depths is very important for the first timers. Second, uh, uh, whoever is giving a second attempt, I feel they have quite an edge already over the concepts. They should just practice past papers again and again, because I think that is past papers will help you just not give you confidence, but also the time management, because a major factor of this paper is to complete the paper. If you can't complete the paper, I don't think so. It's quite possible for you to pass because you have to attempt fully. So I feel like uh, time management, your exam skills, because... I have also flunked my papers in prior and I have come from that experience that once you flunk a paper, you the major problem is not your preparation, could be, but uh, the major problem is how you appeared yourself in the exam, your confidence, your time management, because that was one thing lacking in me, which I identified. So for the second timers, I would just say that they should not feel very demotivated. They should get up their confidence and they should prepare more for the exam condition as against the concepts because they're already pretty well versed with the concepts if they're giving the same time. Okay. So guys, uh, to conclude, AFM is doable even if you are a working individual, you can still score 70 plus and you can also enjoy one week vacation in mid as well. Okay. Then uh, doing past papers is key to success and be motivated. Don't get demotivated. Just be motivated and keep doing past paper. I thank you so much, Ria, for taking out time for the session and guiding and constant the new students for December 23. Thank you so, so much. Thank you, so thank you. Thank you. Bye. Okay, so <clears throat> a very detailed uh, response we just uh, had in front of us from Ria and uh, really uh, inspiring as well. Uh, now it's time to invite Shifa, but Shifa unfortunately is not available. She secured 73 in financial management. Uh, she is a brilliant student and uh, that's what I can say. Uh, she really covered things well. Uh, she also became uh, the position, uh, nationwide position holder in, uh, in performance management as well, a uh, few attempts back. So that's the end of this session where we were uh, having short conversations with all the uh, high achievers of WIFI. It's now time to move towards uh, the third segment. Uh, and that third segment is 
uh, the Q and A. Unfortunately, there is some problem uh, going on. That's why uh, we are not able to show the tutor's video. Uh, the team is working on that, but we are continuing with the session. So uh, this, this segment is a one where students now uh, will ask questions. You guys have to ask questions. Sir Ahmed and I'll be taking questions and we will directly be forwarding all the relevant queries to the relevant tutors who are uh, in our panel today. Uh, be a bit slow in terms of asking questions because there are so many questions we have to uh, deal with. So we'll try to summarize things. We'll try to, uh, we'll, we'll not answer repetitive questions, obviously. Anything which is new, uh, we'll try to sum up all those things. So I think uh, let's begin now. Uh, Sir Ahmed, uh, I think the first Q&A part, uh, you start and then I'll take up. Okay, um, there is a very famous question uh, which Mohammed Asif raised and Ma'am Tashpita already answered it pretty clearly. Uh, is there any benefit of administrative review? To be very honest, in the last 13 years, ever since I'm teaching ACCA students, I've never ever heard even a single case where ACCA undermined their own examination process. So there is no point of going for the administrative review. If anyone out there who has failed at 49, if he or she believes that he, he or she could have scored 60, no, you are you're you're mistaken. I'm so sorry to let you know. Uh, you need to go move on and you need to work towards the next exam attempt. There is no point of you know wasting your money because ACC is only going to make sure there is no arithmetical mistake. And there is not going to be any arithmetical mistake. They are not going to completely remark your paper. So never ever go for the administrative review. As Mem has said, honestly, never work. Yeah, absolutely. It never works. So moving forward towards the next question. Ah, well, there is a question from the Kaplan study resources are not given by the ACCA board and they recommend to go through the study hub. Does the study help? Uh, the, does the ACCA study help? help? Yes, absolutely. The ACCA study hub resources are a beautiful blend of both the Kaplan and the BPP. They are trustworthy. They are damn good. So you need to invest quality time on the ACCA website and the ACCA study hub will help you. Okay, so there is a question from Ikta. Can we combine SBL and SBR? And I think Ma'am Tashwita is the right person to answer this question. Uh, okay, SBL and SBR, can we combine that? Uh, if you're planning for December, I think the time left is too less. And uh, I think Sir Hassan always states this, that if you're giving SBL, please give it uh, single-handedly, no paper combined with SBL. Reason being, it's very technical exam. I would say it's it's a different paper as compared to other uh, 13 papers of our uh, qualification. So I would suggest uh, if on the SBR perspective, you can combine it better with AAA rather than SBL because anyway, there's no overlap between the two. Plus, SBL is a heavy subject, so you can go uh, SBL single-handedly. You can combine SBR with AAA, and that's my perspective. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ekta, uh, as far as the March 2024 attempt is concerned, if you are going to start now, SBL and SBR for the March 2024, yes, you are good to go because for, for the March 2024, you have got good enough time to cover any two papers. Okay, uh, so there is another question. What about AAA and SBR? What about AAA and SBR? Well, I think the same perspective prevails over here as well. If you are planning for the December, AAA and SBR, well, it would be a challenging task provided you are not a full-time student. But for the March 2024 attempt, yes, absolutely fine. Okay, so there is another question. 37 to 38 SBL, which area should I improve? Well. Uh, well, I think you need to join the reset batch of the SBL and I think it is going to create a magical story for you as far as SBL is concerned. 37 to 38 does not only mean that you lack exam practice, but I think it also means you need to brush up your concepts as well. So I will not ask, uh, well, I will not suggest you to just go for the past paper. I would say go for the reset batch, which will be available from tomorrow. Uh, another question, failed PM at 44. Oh, well, I hope it's not because of the time series analysis. 
any advice on pm sir why is this paper so horrible well you should write horrible in capital letters and what's the way how to pass this paper why don't we have any solution to this and people fail so many times after putting 100% effort umar shahid uh sir rizwan is definitely going to answer your question loud and clear okay 44 uh, performance management yeah uh, students do face problems in pm the major reason is the big shift from ma towards pm even though ma is the starting uh, background paper of performance management but you know the style of paper is so different when it comes to performance management you have to deal with crqs which you are not familiar with when you were uh, giving your ma exam so the transition actually creates a bit of problem and also uh, one thing is very famous about performance management and that is uh, multiple topics are tested uh, in one crq question so that creates the problem now coming towards the solution which is the most important thing solution is it is doable it is not impossible you have to be positive you have to uh, increase your effort that's it you you just have to raise your level and how you going to do this is practice you have a very good resource now uh, given by acc that is acc study hub uh, you can use that you have revision kits of kaplan and bpp uh, you can even be part of our courses as well the point is you have to practice umar the more you practice the more you become confident and the more you will be able to make it so many students who were not able to pass uh, pm and are part of today's session the message is very simple practice practice and practice yes one more thing do read few recent examiner reports why because whatever mistakes your friends have done in the past you should understand those even you have done those mistakes so that is a very rich source of learning so make sure you do uh, read the uh, exam reports as well okay thanks i think i've answered pm uh, question here another question from sir rizwan would you well would you suggest pm and fm in, for the march setting march is yeah yeah very much in very much in for march it's it's doable okay there is another question from sindhi atx is it local tech i'm based in south africa well at wifi we are offering uk variant of atx okay so there is another question sir i've started as we are from now for march 20 to 24 and i'm thinking after december i should also go for triple a for march 24 uh, would you suggest well if you are uh if you have already started preparing as we are for the march 2024 and if you are going to add triple a well it's a doable job considering your we are talking about the march attempt not the december attempt okay shafa has raised a question double a and fm together in march absolutely yes another question is i have double a and text exemption skills so uh uh okay okay uh, sir taha you have got a question practice from kaplan kit is worthy for afm quick word on that all right uh, yes it can be used but i generally prefer that you start with acca raw past papers and acca recommended answers sometimes the kit questions are amended and the answers are not very detailed so i personally recommend you go with the acca official suggested answer and questions rather than captain or bpp <clears throat> okay that's great okay another interesting question is it recommended to do the epsm ethics professional skill module before attempting any strategic professional exam absolutely yes especially before you attempt the triple a exam it is highly advisable that you should go on and attempt that ethics professional skill module one day or the other you have to do it right in order to become accm member you have to do it in order to get the oxford brooks bachelor's program you have to do it so why not today okay a very interesting question uh uh i got 49 in sbl what do you suggest well i would suggest a uh, context sir hasan dusani in person okay can you please tell me more about the question number 1 in sbr well for that let's engage ma'am ma prabha if she is available can you can you answer this question how to tackle question number 1 in sbr what about question number 1 in sbr 
Hi, yeah. So that's the latest change in the SBR paper, as we all are aware. So how do you tackle it? Well, I think um, the practice platform is the key for you, right? So uh, they already, I mean, you. I think you must be kind of aware of what is the change, right? So the change is that they're going to give you a, a pre-formatted, you know, kind of a, a, you know, spreadsheet in which they're going to be filling in some numbers for you already. So there are going to be two types of questions from that. That is basically either they will ask you to, you know, kind of um, there'll be some numbers missing in the in the group accounts and you need to be filling that in. Or else there could be some numbers which have been calculated erroneously, right? So either ways, you know, nothing is changing. Actually, you need to know your fundamental concepts on consolidation. You need to be clear about all the adjustments that are required. You need to be very clear about working on two, three, four, and five in consolidation. And once you do that, then you pick up problems from the practice platform and you do those. So that way you get hands-on, you know, exposure to uh, how to tackle the, uh, you know, the spreadsheet problem, which is already pre-filled. So there's really um, nothing to worry about majorly in that, just that they require you to, you know, kind of show your Excel skills as well. So they are kind of testing you, you know, they're like kind of combining, uh, you know, your uh, basic technical knowledge on SPR along with your spreadsheet skills. So uh, that, that's about it. I mean, nothing more than that. So really practice platform is the key. You need to practice more of those kind of problems from there. Absolutely. I think practice platform is the key in all the papers. I don't know why ACCA students are so obs obsessed with pen paper and why so, so many students are so obsessed with Microsoft Office. We need to make sure that we are solving each and every question on the main event, on the main ground, that is ACCA practice platform. Okay, and it uh, has raised a question, failed FM to 40 and now 47. Any quick word from Sir Rizwan? Give the paper again. Uh, you improved FM. By, yeah, FM, yeah. You improved by 7%. I think uh, that's the positive thing. Uh, you should reappear in December if you think that things are in your mind. Uh, the quick you appear, the better it is. Uh, so I don't know which other paper you are giving, but if you have already planned some other paper, then you have to think whether you can manage both in one attempt. Uh, in that case, you might shift FM to March. Uh, but yeah, for FM, things are simple. I would say just focus on risk management, more business valuation. Uh, OT part is important. Theoretical areas do disturb a lot. Just focus on those areas. Okay, there was a question from Requel. Uh, failed double A, 48. How do I bounce back? Well, focus more on the section A questions. And more importantly, uh, well, the my exam performance report would be available probably tomorrow, I believe. You need to review that and you'll be able to figure it out what went wrong. And you need to share that report with me on my WhatsApp. Do it tomorrow, please. Uh, there is another question. Is it possible to start AFM from scratch for December sitting? Well, I think Sartaha is definitely going to say yes, provided you are a full-time student. If you're not a full-time student, you have to make sure you are able to devote at least four to five hours per day for the AFM. And then you can do that. Okay. Failed SBL this session. Can I go for both ATX and SBL in this session? Uh, Sarizwan, failed SBL. Can I go for both ATX and SBL for the December? Uh, yeah, I think uh, we need to ask Miss Sanya regarding that. Uh, what do you think, ma'am? Uh, any student appearing uh, for ATX SBL manageable? I think ATX will be it's first time for the heavy paper. It's a heavy paper. Uh, when it comes to both SPL, as far as advanced taxation is concerned, both cannot be managed in the same attempt. So it's a big no from my side, because like passing the paper is uh, is a really a booster. It's really a, a triggering uh, factor for the student to attempt other papers. So if you're going to attempt both of the papers at the same time, it's like going to give you a very nervous shock. So it's like uh, I would say no. And it's better that um, 
if uh, you if your tx was not exempted previously then you should go first with advanced taxation and afterwards you'll attempt spl but if you haven't had any taxation exam before so uh, either way you can like uh, take up your exam i mean you can go first with spl and then afterwards you can take up your advanced taxation exam okay so jerry if you're here there is a question i'm done with fr kaplan exam kit preparing for december what should be my next step uh, i think he got disconnected uh, tashwita okay. can answer ma'am tashwita i'm done with fr kaplan exam kit yeah uh, so question is that he's done with kit and then what what sh what should he what should he do now or what should she do now so basically you're done with the very important part of your preparation you're done with the kit so you must have highlighted the questions uh, which went wrong for you so first of all you must go through them again you should revise uh, what were your mistakes in your first uh, you you know the coating of the kit and uh, then you can also try on uh, like if you have covered kaplan kit you can try on mcqs from the bpp kit also and now you have extra study resource of acca study hub because you're done with the things well in time so you can explore acca study hub you can explore bpp for the mcqs because more you practice for section a and b i feel better it is and yeah that's from my side okay janvi has raised a question how many hours should be the study and what should be the main focus for reappearing in double a uh as i failed at 45 well the my exam performance report the your exam performance report will dictate you will tell you will reveal everything so you need to look into your exam report your exam performance report and then you'll be able to figure it out uh what is your problem is it risk is it substantive procedure is it the section a is it the bookish knowledge so look forward to the exam performance report uh, okay mohammad asif has raised a question uh sataha how to tackle sbl with afm how much hours per day are enough i want to go with both papers sbl and afm sataha okay so asif wants to go with the two papers and he has also mentioned that he has 9 to 5 job yes so, uh, asif uh, it will be very difficult i suggest that either you Uh, go for both the papers in March twenty twenty four. Have a four months time, so that you are easily absorbing both the subjects. Or you go for with one paper. Having said that, since it will be your first attempt, you will still need to devote a lot of time. But two papers, no, I will not recommend you to give SBL and AFM and a nine to with a nine to five job in December. That is going to be disastrous. okay so uh <clears throat> thank you very much sir taha for giving your input in relation to this question uh another question here we have for spr failed uh, at 48 and the student uh, has also registered for atx so tashpita what do you think uh, anyone who failed at sbr at 48 should appear for sbr or atx or both Uh, i would highly suggest that he appears for sbr because 48 is really near to the passing score that means uh, he is clear on the concepts and uh, what is lacking is maybe practice writing questions case studies or giving mocks so it's better to get rid of sbr as soon as possible because it's just two marks away whereas atx might sound good because uh you know the from the student perspective he might be wondering that i have failed sbr so he wants to escape sbr so he might find comfort in atx but the fact is that atx is a very huge paper and picking it up for december uh, i i don't find personally would be a better choice as opposed to doing sbr again okay so you should appear for sbr as per tashweta right okay uh we have a question about sbl uh i think 1.5 months enough starting sbl i don't think sir hasan uh will also allow you in that case so still uh, you can join his special orientation session to be held i'll share the details uh but i don't think it will be easy for you to manage in that case 
Uh, we have another question for FR, uh, starting from scratch for December. So a uh, quick word, Tashpita, in relation to this question. Yes, of course, it is possible. Please go ahead. If you are full-time student or part-time student, FR is easily manageable in the remaining days with proper planning. Okay, great. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, Hanan, uh, ACCS Study Hub is a very good uh, resource, I would say. You should go there. Uh, there are pocket notes available, uh, detailed notes available, well structured, I would say. So you 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 should use ACS Study Hub. It's a very uh, important and rich source of content. Uh, so it will help you for any examination. So you you should use that. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, we have another question, but that relates to F eight now, sir. Any tips on how to pass F eight paper? Failed thrice. Okay, if you fail thrice, definitely you will. Uh... You need some serious work on your double A because if there was a minor issue, minor mistake, minor, you know, a, a bit here and there, that would have been covered in the second attempt. But three straight failure means there are fundamental conceptual mistakes and there is a huge possibility your methodology or your approach to the paper itself is not appropriate. You're not realizing that in order to nail the double A paper, there are three different perspectives uh, with respect to the exam preparation. Uh, what about the bookish knowledge? What about the section A questions, which are usually the underrated part of the exam preparation? And then finally, the application side of the AA. So it's a 20% bookish knowledge, 30% uh, the section A questions, and then comes the 50% application side. Everyone is running for the application side, but there is another 50%. So watch out for your My Exam Performance Report. Okay, and I have... Uh, you have repeatedly mentioned three to four times uh, about this exam performance report. Uh, definitely, it plays a very important role. It's a very good, you know, source of learning. So students, every student should definitely refer to that report. Okay. Uh, Ruby is asking about ATX in December. Uh, Ms. Sanya, possible to give ATX in December? How many hours to study? Initially, one has to spend two to two and a half hours a day, and it has to be a blend of uh, like multiple learning activities. I mean, uh, one has to give one hour to recorded lectures, half an hour to e-notes and half an hour to one hour uh, to practice questions. So if you would keep on like taking a blend of the, these learning activities, then two to two and, and a half hours a day would be sufficient. But of course, uh, the length of the time to be given for practice purposes has to be increased in the end. That's something very much normal for all the students, for all the papers. Okay. And if I ask you, do you have any plan in your mind for the students who will appear in December in terms of proper planner? Yeah, the, the plan is like already there on your portal. And uh, if you just follow it on week-wise basis, then it is like easy for you to cover all the things in like next five to six weeks and each and everything will then be appropriately covered from each and every angle. And, and uh, I will not be skipping anything and I would not let you skip anything. And this is how uh, the preparation has to be done as far as the numerical uh, papers are concerned. So that's uh, very much doable. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Uh, Christine, you have a question in relation to APM. Uh, you tend to score in 40s. Uh, <clears throat> this means you are lacking again and again. So there is problem with your answers. Uh, you need to practice. You need to write the answers. I always say for uh, my APM paper, you write your answer, you compare with the past paper answer. Yes, past paper is an ideal answer, so don't get confused. But 60-70%, uh, if you're matching with that, that's perfectly <clears> fine. <throat> and do read examiner report. That is very, very important to read examiner report, okay?
Okay, uh, Joyce has a question. FR, FM with 40, both failed, which uh, you what which we suggest you to take. Uh, I think uh, you are doing job. So uh, it all depends if you can spare time for both the papers. Uh, it would be really good ideal if you spare time for both the papers and reattempt. I know it, it will be difficult, but still, if you can manage it, then yes. Otherwise, uh, go with the paper that you feel more confident about uh, as of today. Appear that in December and the rest you can give in March. Okay, uh, ATX or PM, which one to select? TX is exempt. Miss Sanya, what do you think? TX exempt, a person can go with ATX. If you say no, then I'll say go with APM. Um, if we consider our uh, teaching methodology, then uh, exempting any paper would not no would no longer be a problematic thing for you because all the TX concepts are being covered in advanced taxation as well. So nothing is like missing over there. So you can uh, cover each and everything. Let me just tell you that advanced performance management is very important as far as uh, uh, industry application is concerned. So if you are already doing job in those areas where uh, the financial implications or the strategy making implications are concerned that I would advise that you should go for ad uh, advanced performance management. Otherwise, uh, if you consider the past percentage of ATX and it is like always on a better side as compared to the rest of the uh, optional papers. So as far as passing the paper is concerned, yes, my vote is with ATX. And furthermore, you might have uh, a knowledge of this thing that your ACCA is connected with further examination uh, streams as well. For instance, if you take up advanced taxation, you're going to get an exemption for an additional paper in ICAEW. So that is something which is going to give you an added advantage for your further courses if you are interested in taking it up uh, in future. Uh, so from industry perspective, it's advanced performance management. If, but if you are just interested in like passing the paper in a smooth way, then I would suggest that advanced taxation is good to go. Okay, that's that's well answered. Covered all the aspects. Thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, AAA with SBL will not work. Uh, reason is Sir Hassan never encourages giving two paper at one time. So I think if you have... Not past AAA, I think considering today, you should reappear for AAA, uh, pass that and then go with SBL uh, in a fresh attempt. Sartaha webinar will start in November. We'll be sharing the webinar details with you people uh, very shortly. Uh, somebody has a question, SBR prepared already with the SBL for December, should I give together? As we are prepared already, so you are giving the answer yourself. If it is prepared, you should give. Uh, if SBL, uh, you will start now. So I think, again, that, that might become tough. A uh, quick word on this, Tashwita. Uh, well, I think it is doable uh, if you have already covered SBR. Okay, okay, great. Salma, uh, your question is, you got exemption of F123. Uh, I don't think that will create a problem because try to understand why do we get exemptions? We get exemptions because ACCA thinks that we have covered the similar things in some other qualification, right? So if there are exemptions, it doesn't mean that you don't know the concept. You you must have covered that some uh, that same concept in some other qualification. So that, that will not bother you, obviously. Sorry to ask again. Okay, sir, Taha, if I take remote work till December attempt, uh, so I can give AFM with SBL. Yes, Taha, a quick word. Okay, uh, once again, Asif, uh, SBL with AFM will be very tough, even though you will be working remote, but still you have to give proper time, correct? So you will have nine to five job. Then SBL itself is not a single paper. You can count it as two papers. So effectively, it will be 2.5 or three papers, which will make it very difficult. And since you have given AFM previously, I recommend that first you get done with AFM this time in December and go for SBL in March 24. 
Okay, great. Thank you very much. Uh, Jerry, I have a question for you. Can a student start for FR? Jerry, I hope you can hear me now. Can a student can start for FR for December while working full time? Yes, please. Definitely, I think uh, you can uh, do that because there are a lot of students who are currently working and as well as uh, studying FR. The thing is like always when you're doing FR, it's it's sort of broader perspective. So the thing is like FR uh, is a carrot for our knowledge to SBR and AA, AAA. So always try to learn it with conceptually so that you are able to understand and understand the concept. And again, that passing will come with the concept. So definitely you can do it. That's what my answer is. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Uh, we have a question uh, from Salma again. Uh, what paper to opt for after F9? Uh, I think, uh, again, I should uh, uh, ask the professional, uh, compulsory professional papers tutor here, but we don't have Sir Hassan. So, uh, Prabha, what do you think a student who wants to go with SBR after F9 works well? Okay, I think uh, she is not here. Yes, Tashmita, what do you think a student should go with S? Um, now, my question is, I, I want to ask one more thing from you here, Tashmita. Uh, what do you think opting for professional uh, compulsory paper is a better option or to go with the optional professional papers? Yes, yeah, so mostly students go for SBR in their first, uh, as a first professional paper, reason being it is related to accounting. And we've been doing as a commerce uh, background student, we are acquainted with the uh, basic debit credits and we are okay with accounts. Plus SBR has a good pass percentage. And the reason I would not suggest people going for optional after FM, like very obvious choice can be AFM, but then AFM should be chosen if they're very sure that they want to pick up AFM. They should give themselves some time uh, maybe by entering the professional level, uh, passing SBR and SPL, and then deciding on the optionals, maybe. So I would suggest SBR. Okay, great. Last question for today. Uh, Ms. Sanya, what do you suggest, uh, Sindhi, in relation to ATX? Should the student appear of ATX as it's the first attempt, considering it's December? I hope it's the only paper that the, the student is going to take up in December, right? If that's yeah. the case, then it is pretty much doable. Go for it. Okay. So if you are giving ATX for, and it's the only paper, then you the should paper. go for it. Okay. <clears throat> now, uh, uh, before I end this session, uh, I would ask Ahmed the last question for the Q&A and also... Uh, the importance about exam performance report. So, Ahmed, you first answer the question. Uh, student is studying F8 from you right now. Uh, so, can he send you the answers for marking and then just give uh, students the idea about the importance of exam uh, performance report? Okay. <clears throat> at Wifi, I think uh, for AA, there are at least six assignments. Uh, and there are even more for AAA and those assignments are thoroughly marked and yes, if you are feeling underconfident or if your result with respect to the assignment is not appropriate, you can always send another question relevant to the same topic to me directly on the WhatsApp, obviously not on the portal and your assignment or your question will be marked. Don't worry. And okay. Uh, yeah, I wanted to add this. Uh, what about that? Uh, your your exam status report. So everyone out there who is still somewhere in the ACCA skill level paper from PM to FR to TAPS to AA to FM, there is a very, very important thing and it's called your exam status report. And it's a blessing for all the students, especially who flunk the paper. This thing is not available as of now for the professional level paper. What you have to do is if you cleared your paper and especially if you were not able to pass the paper, you have to log into your ACCA account using your unique ACCA registration ID. And you have to navigate and look forward to the exam status and the result section. Over there, you will be able to figure it out. A thing called view your status report. 
that view your status report would be available tomorrow i think for the december uh, for the september 2023 or maybe it's available now you will be able to get a unique customized feedback of your performance of your exam what did you do in section a how much you scored in section a of the pm exam how much you scored in the section b of the fr exam how much you scored in the first crq of the fm exam how much you scored in the second crq of the fm exam so you will be okay let's talk about double a as of now you will be able to figure it out how good or bad you were in ethics how good or bad you were in substantive procedure because when it comes to substantive procedure there is a very common story a student was not prepared for substantive procedure or not well prepared but he or she will come out of the examination hall and will and will say well i managed to attempt all the substantive procedure in fact i wrote extra substantive procedure there is a huge possibility that those substantive procedures are not going to give you any mark whatsoever because a you maybe you you just wrote learn those procedure and you were not able to apply those procedure so that exam report will highlight what is the area you need to improve on for any skill paper from pm to fm so it's a real eye opener i hope this um, you know these couple of minutes are going to be helpful for all those who don't know what is exam status report just google it and you will be able to figure it out thank you okay uh i hope uh, this is clear to all of you guys now uh, i want to officially announce the upcoming courses that wifi is offering uh, so we have started our reset course from today uh, we are offering up to 50% discount depending on the number of papers you uh, appear in december attempt from 5th uh, of november we will be starting our revision course which is also known as our crash course so now what is the difference let me tell you very quickly now the research course is a regular course it has nothing different it it includes uh, the live sessions the remaining live sessions the one that already been held you will be getting through recordings it will include the remaining assignments that will mark for you people it's it the content wise it's same it's it's the regular course but the best thing is we are offering that at 30% discount so students who want to reset can come into our regular course and get the discount and be part of this regular course uh, where you can easily cover up things because we will be giving you fresh new planners considering that you have joined the batch now but if you feel like you don't have to go through the entire content so you need just a uh, revision of the key areas the important areas in that case you just wait and you join our revision course starting from 5th november uh, but the best thing about that revision course is it also includes mock yeah the importance of mock is very much and i'll ask very soon sir taha about the importance of mock as well uh, so mocks are really important uh, in your exam success so it includes mock as well now after that uh you can uh, you can be part of this revision match if you feel it's appropriate for you the support team will help you in all the details you can contact the support team uh, there are certain or deals i want to bring in front of you anyone who wants to pursue a uh, cfa uh, so they can be part of that uh, combo deal where you will be getting the benefit of registering yourself in CFA level 1 with any uh, two papers of professional uh, you can get flat 25% off on that as well at CFA level uh, then you have another deal which is of OBU uh, i i there are a lot of questions about OBU right so i'll ask one of our tutor to give a quick idea about OBU as well uh, about its discontinuation still it's on you have the chance we have good mentors here uh, uh, who can help you in terms of your OBU uh, mentorship so there is another deal in front of you now quickly uh, uh, miss sanya if you can give a quick idea about OBU how important it, it is for the student and what do you think should they opt before 26 Yes, uh, going through the BSc honors uh, Oxford Brookes degree is like uh, a very valuable addition to your resume 
uh, to uh, your profile. So one has to go through uh, uh, this um, opportunity being offered uh, by Oxford Brooks because it's like going to be shortly withdrawn. So it is like necessary for all of you to register for this thing because um, afterwards, whenever in life you would like to uh, go for a certain sort of higher education, there are a lot of connections uh, which could be found if you are done with your BSc and it is like being done from one of the reputable institutes of UK. So I advise that one has to go for it as soon as possible because this is like a value addition activity. Okay, thank you very much. So you have a good chance to do uh, uh, mentorship program as well quickly. Now the schedule of the live classes, the orientation are starting from tomorrow, that is 17th. The details will be shared to all of you in respective WhatsApp groups uh, with the timetable. Uh, so they are starting from tomorrow. Now these sessions are very important. Why? Because maybe we haven't answered all the questions today. Uh, maybe you need to ask more specific questions relating to the subject. So these are dedicated sessions conducted will be conducted by the tutors themselves where they will be discussing the major reasons for the failure uh, about the passing ratios and they will also come up with a good plan how you can cover things uh, for your December attempt. So do join these sessions. We'll be giving you the details of these uh, in the respective different WhatsApp groups. Okay, <clears throat> so moving forward, uh, these are the contact details. You can contact our support team uh, for uh, all the registration details and the timetables. Uh, I would just want Sir Taha uh, to quickly, in, in a very short way, to uh, uh, just mention the importance of attempting MOG and how it helps a student to pass. Okay, thank you, sir. So MOGs are really important. Uh, they highlight the fact uh, that uh, how you will be able to manage the time in your exam and analyze you. In my regular batch, I take three mock exams. I conducted one mock exam uh, right now. Another will be in probably 15 to 20 days and then one more at the very end. So I consistently keep on tracking student performance. I check those mock exams. I have a team who is also helping assisting students and uh, on Sunday, uh, I did conduct this exercise for my December students, the regular students one time, and they were very happy. They were able to identify their mistakes as early as 15th of October. So they can easily work out. They still have 45 days. Likewise, if anyone joins in reset batch, I am going to conduct another mock exam in 15 to 20 days, and they will get to know where they stand very, very way before their original exam. And that too, I will be conducting live. So you get the real feel. Okay. So they are very important. They help you to pass the exam. And that's why at WIFI, the passing ratio have always been high. And we very, very highly believe in quality education rather than going for quantity. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. I hope people will consider this seriously, the mocks that we offer. Uh, before I uh, end the session, uh, last piece of advice from my side, uh, before Sir Ahmed will close the session, that is, guys, do uh, make sure that you stay motivated. Uh, failures are considered failures only when you stop learning from them. So these are not failures. <clears throat> you learn, you improve. So make sure you remain motivated. Join our respective auditor sessions for further guidance. I hope this session would have helped you uh, and you will be motivated. Don't lose hope. Remember, it's a professional exam. If you fail, doesn't matter. Just work hard, learn, and definitely you will succeed. You will succeed in the upcoming attempts. Thank you very much from my side. Over to you, Sir Ahmed, for the closing note. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, well, the closing remarks are, when it comes to ACCA, the real failure is if you are unable to figure it out why you failed the paper. And I think the worst part is if you realize why you failed the paper, you are not trying to improve yourself. So I think uh, you need to place a cut, cut off tonight. You need to identify why you failed the paper and you need to move forward. You need to look forward to the December 2023 exam setting. 
And if you had a bad result in September 2023 exam attempt, that does not mean December 2023 cannot be a winning attempt for you. At Wifi, all the tutors are absolutely committed for the reset batch, the reset orientation starting from tomorrow. And for each and every paper, there is a doable planner which will incorporate all the past papers, all the important stuff, all the technical articles, all the past paper practice, and will make sure that you will be able to attempt the mock exam, which will be somewhere around the end of November, leading towards the glory in the first week of December. So I wish you all the best for the December 2023 attempt. Do sign up for the reset orientation session and good luck. And let's create a success story in the winters as the winters are coming. Thank you.